Hi, book friends. I'm Erin, and this is Erin Go Read. This is a tag video of the... Oh, scared my dog. This is the Dilemmas of a Book Nerd tag today, originated by Lindsay's Little Library. These are 10 kind of questions, conundrums posed to the book nerd and uh, what we do in these situations. The first is how do you store or organize your books? Right now they're not looking very organized, are they? Uh, I just filmed a video that involved these books here and I have some uh, Christmas presents that are sitting up here. Um, at the so moment. just a very quick organizational tour. Uh, this single bookcase here, these are fiction that have been read and then kind of getting lower, this gets into uh, fantasy sci-fi that have been read. And then these two shelves here are unread. Um, it's a little bit of a lie because Anne of Green Gables and How We Fight for Our Lives are sitting right here. Those have been read, as has The Handmaid's Tale. So mostly these are a mess right now. Um, so that's the general configuration in here. It's hard to get the lighting, but this is the the front room. So on either side of this couch here, I have a black Billy bookcase. So this one here, I have like Bibles and theology. Um, it actually goes like Bibles, nonfiction, theology, more nonfiction. It's just kind of a mess. But in general, that's what's happening over there. And then over here, we have kids toys down there. Over here, it's basically Harry Potter and a mess of middle grade. There's a big stack of middle grade right there. A lot of reshelving needs to happen in my life. So this is kind of a new addition, but um, this is in my entry hallway. So I have this this small bookcase here where I have my Penguin Cloth Bound Classics, and then uh, my Reader's Digest hardbacks. And then this is my, uh, this is the bookcase that I stare at the most. So at the very top, I have some Book of the Month books that I need to get to. I have a really cool Reader's Digest collection of um, Sherlock Holmes, which I got at a used bookstore, and I have English. Um, basically, my collections of books are out here. So, Vintage Russians, Steinbeck, um, Everyman li Everyman's Library, Penguin English Library. And this is the shelf that's kind of like my working TBR. So, these are the books, like my TBR for the month that I haven't started. Um, Usually when I finish a book, I'll stack them up like this way. Um, and then these are the books that I have like currently reading, although all of these are, are kind of like temporarily abandoned. Um, the books that I'm actually in the middle of reading are stacked up on a table right now because I was reading them. And then more, more collections. And then randomly we go to, from like classic edition collections to sci-fi and fantasy. And then I recently moved this actually out of my bedroom. I was using it for clothing in my in my uh, closet. But these are kind of, I don't know exactly what this is. I've got some like classics here, some Persephone classics. I've got my Harry Potter trunk down there. Um, that's all nonfiction right there. And then these are just kind of like on my radar. They're not on my imminent TBR, but uh, they should be soon, I suppose. And then sometimes books just end up like in stacks on tables. This little like cardboard <laughs> Ikea box, I have um, some mass market paperbacks. Um, I don't have a lot of mass market paperbacks, but these there's some here that I had since uh, like middle school, or I have some really cool um, old Agatha Christie's that I got at a local uh, used bookstore. Question three is, do you lend your books out? Not really. The only people I really lend my books to are my sister and my brother-in-law and my friend Megan. Um, because those are really, I don't have a whole lot of readers in my life. Um, Megan reads a lot, but we used to be roommates. But um, she now, we don't, we don't live near each other anymore. So the last time we saw each other, um, I let her borrow a book, the beautiful copy of The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, 
and she has it and I'm sure she's taking great care of, uh, care of it. We live like an hour and a half away from each other now, so I'm sure one day I will get that back. I know that it is in safe hands. Uh, and then occasionally I might lend something to my sister and my brother-in-law and um, you know, I, I know where those books are, so um, it just doesn't come up that often, I guess. Question number four is how do you acquire your books? Uh, kind of the typical combination of things. So I have a Barnes and Noble, um, you know, membership. So if it's like a popular new release, then you get the 40% member discount on that. So if there's a book out that I, that I know I want to read, um, The Institute, for example, by Stephen King. I bought that when it was new. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I know I'm going to read it. And so I was able to get that for 40% off. They also have really great um, paperback sales, like the buy two, get one, uh, the buy, buy two, get a third free, or sometimes it's buy one, get one half off, um, that kind of thing. So, uh, I'll definitely, I definitely do that. And I just like, I just like the feel of being in a Barnes and Noble as well. So it's, um, there's the experience of being there in the bookstore that I really love. And it, it reminds me of, um, you know, my dad taking me there. We used to have a Borders that had the cafe and they would have like live music and stuff. And so I would go there with my dad. I think it was on Friday nights they used to do that. That's not there anymore. But the, um, that process just kind of reminds me, gives me that nostalgic piece. And then what's better than just hanging out in a bookstore, right? I live in a suburban area where we don't have a lot of independent, like anything. So I don't have any like new independent bookstores that I can go to. Um, but I do have a local used bookstore, uh, the Bookworm, which is like two miles from my house. So I definitely go there. And that's really great for getting uh, like classics. I've gotten lots of really cool editions of classics, um, really nice editions sometimes too, like a lot of the Penguin uh, Black Spines that I have, um, I've gotten from there or the Barnes and Noble Classics editions. And uh, like these ones right here, I just found, there's uh, Little Women is in the other room because it's on my TBR this month. But this was three volumes of um, Louisa May Alcott all in these like really nice matching uh, editions and like green is my color. So I just love those. Also, I order from Amazon. I order from Book Depository, especially if I want to get a UK edition of something and uh, half price books. So there's a half price, there is a half price book near to me also and they have new and used books there. I will sell books there and when I was in college I used it, their website, it was the first time I knew of Half Price Books was buying textbooks from them. And then I, about a year ago, I sold back a bunch of textbooks and I got like $240 I think in store credit. So that was pretty sweet. Uh, of course, I could blow through $240 worth of store credit pretty quickly. So that's all gone at this point. That's another great spot where I can just go and browse and a lot of times, you know, I will find really cool editions. They, I've even had, I've picked up several new copies of Penguin Clothbound Classics there that are, I want to say they're like $12, I think, or $14 when I get them there, which which is about half price, I, I think, for the compared to what you buy them, uh, compared to their new price. And I do use my library too. I really should use my library more. Um, and oh, I'm actually wearing a shirt. So um, I'm about 100 miles away from where this uh, bookstore is, but Book Passage, um, there's one in, um, I think there's two in San Francisco. One that one is in the Ferry Building. I'm not sure that the other one, I haven't been to the other one. The one that I went to when I lived in Marin County, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, it's basically the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. Um, that is Marin County and it's gorgeous there and uh, they have a book, book passage in Corte Madera there and there's a there's a new store and then there's a whole other, it's like right next door to it, uh, building that is used as well. And so love doing that. They had lots of book events there with, um, either you could go attend the signing or then they would have signed editions. So I've actually traveled there specifically, like just to go there for the day and pick up Christmas presents for people and then hit up a couple spots that uh, I like to go to when I was there and come back home So that's a good time. So if you're ever in Marin County or in San Francisco, check out Book Passage. So yeah Amazon, bookdepository.com, Barnes & Noble, Half Price Books, my local bookworm, used bookshop, and the library. Question number five is how do you handle all the comments from people about how much you read? Uh, with grace, I will say that. I think a lot of times when 
when people can't believe that you do something, whatever that is, it's because they're trying to, we just naturally empathize with people and so we're trying to put ourselves into, they're trying to put themselves in my shoes. Like, how would I read 10 books in a month? And they just can't fathom being able to do that in their life. And we have different lifestyles. I don't have kids at home. I don't have a spouse at home. So when I'm at home, it's my time and I choose what to do with it. Well, I do have domestic responsibilities. I don't have the same um, competition for my time that someone does, Who? Oh, my time and attention for someone who has family living with them at home. I don't watch a lot of TV. My TV, um, 95% of the time, at least when it's not baseball season, if my TV is on, it is on YouTube. Either I'm watching videos, um, like booktube videos for the most part, or I have some sort of ASMR room that's just providing like background noise and kind of some nice scenery for me. Uh, but that's mostly what I do for my entertainment at home is read. And, and I also utilize audiobooks, which I listen to while I'm uh, running or going for a walk or washing the dishes or putting away laundry. 99% of the time when I'm in my car, I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast, almost never listen to music. You could easily listen to two to three audiobooks a month just by you know, listening while you're driving and while you're doing household chores. Question number six is how do you pick your next book? I have become to be kind of a seasonal reader. Um, so there are certain books that just feel like a certain time of year. Um, it might feel like multiple times of year, I don't know. Um, there are some books that are more clearly a summer book or more clearly uh, a winter book. And there are some that are more gray areas, not to say that I won't read a, you know, a cold weather book in the summer. Uh, last year I read uh, The Snow Child in the middle of summer and I absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorite books of the year, despite the fact that I read it. In, uh, in summer. It's kind of like a seasonal feeling that that book fits at that time. And then that's also usually represented in whatever read-along or read-a-thon is, uh, is going on. So a lot of times I will incorporate um, whatever that is because then there are kind of people to talk about and voices who are uh, I'm watching on booktube that are reading those same things. I read what I want to read and that is often influenced by the season and Readathons, read alongs that are happening on BookTube. Question number seven is How do you choose what books or Kindle to bring with you while you travel? Typically, I mean, I don't travel a whole lot anyway, but pretty much just whatever I'm currently reading, whatever is on my TBR, um, you know, I'm probably not going to take a gigantic book just for um, space and weight sake. Also, I'm very likely going to go to a bookstore wherever I'm going. I think going to a bookstore wherever you're traveling to is a nice way to get uh, some sort of souvenir without having to buy some sort of like Philadelphia magnet or something, some sort of tchotchke that's not really gonna serve any purpose. So I did just recently travel at the end of October. I was in Washington DC for the Marine Corps Marathon and um, the day before the marathon, we took a water taxi up to Alexandria, Virginia and Georgetown, Virginia. And while we were in Alexandria waiting for our boat to Georgetown, we went to Old Town Books and I got this uh, cute tote there. So we went to Old Town Books and it was a cute little independent bookstore. If you're local to there, I recommend it. You probably know it if you're local to there. And then I picked up Hollow Kingdom. And this was a book that I was interested in getting and they had it there. And so, all right. And then I, I started reading this before I left as well. So now Hollow Kingdom will always forever be linked to me to Alexandria, Virginia and my trip for the Marine Corps Marathon. Question number eight, do you write in your books? Do you dog ear your pages? Absolutely. I annotate, I underline. I do sometimes dog ear my pages. It's just, it's, to me, it's like the book has lived. The book wants you to have a conversation with it. So I do. I definitely won't dog ear like really nice editions. Um, a standard, a standard hardback, yeah, I will, I will dog ear the pages. One of my Penguin Clothbound classics, I'm not gonna dog ear those, but I will write in them, I'll underline them. Um, yeah, so definitely. And then it's, it's really fun too in, um, when you go back, if you ever reread that or just thumbing through that book later on and looking at what you had said. 
Question nine is which do you navigate to more new releases or backlist? And I think it's definitely a mix. Um, watching booktube, seeing book hauls and people who are getting arcs and talking about like the buzz about new releases definitely draws me to new releases. So there's certainly more of a, an exterior draw to new releases because of, of that influence. But I also am really drawn to uh, tackling the canon, kind of, um, reading, you know, backlisted authors from, especially from booktubers or uh, booktubers who particularly like a certain author and you've heard really great things about them or, you know, booktube darlings, books that you haven't read um, that are now backlisted books. But then also, um, and I'm going to do a project in 2020, um, reading the canon. And basically, I want to come up with kind of a list in utilizing my own shelves and particularly the books in the, the bookshelf in the other room with all of the my uh, groupings of editions together because those are mo those are mostly classics. Um, and reading the canon and um, because I love when you you read a book and you find that intertextuality and you're like, oh, that was a reference to this. That was a reference to that. Until I read Jane Eyre like a year and a half ago, I didn't know that there was that that Harry Potter was somehow referencing Jane Eyre. I think it's the Starless Sea that I'm reading. Um, there was a, a Harry Potter reference. Ten points to Ravenclaw. There's nothing new under the sun, so I think it's important and really just enriching to have read the books of the past, to read the canon, to read the backlist, which has influenced the new releases, the current authors who are writing. So yeah, both. <laughs> and number 10, when you know there is a series, do you wait until they're all released before you start reading them or will you read them as they come? Um, both, I don't read a ton of series to begin with um, and certainly like an existing series that is already already out, either whether it's complete or not, if it's a really long series, it's kind of intimidating even to start it. You know, the Wheel of Time, for example, I have the first Wheel of Time book. Um, it in and of it in and of itself is kind of an intimidating book based on its size. But then also knowing that the series is as long as it is. Um, Harry Potter was one. I didn't start reading it until after the fourth movie came out. So I read the first four books. Um, so I read books one through six just all back to back and then had to wait for book seven to come out. And kind of the beauty of that is you have kind of the fandom excitement of getting to wait for the new book. So I think that that can be exciting as well. Um, I need to do a better job at continuing on or finishing up the series that I've started. For example, I need to read A Conjuring of Light. Um, the What is that series called? The V.E. Schwab series, the last one is A Conjuring of Light, so I need to read that one. Um, I read and loved uh, Red Sister, I need to read Grey Sister, and then Holy Sister came out this year, so I'm way behind on that one. Both. I don't know. It just depends. There's so much to read. So that is the dilemmas of a book nerd tag. Let me know your answers to some of these. Do you have anything in particular that, that stands out as, as like unique? Um, and I would like to tag a few people. So I'm gonna tag Geraldine Reads, Hannah's Books, Veronica at V's Reads and Rambles, and Sarah at Commas and Ampersands. Thank you for watching. See you around the tube. <laughs>